the Pope actually gave a special dispensation for using it against the Muslims. That's Christianity. And there are certain pacifistic branches of Christianity, like the Quakers and others, that absolutely oppose warfare in any way, shape, or form. But that is not dominant, normative Christianity throughout Christian history. So when you see Muslims around the world that defend themselves, they're simply being good Abrahamic peoples. They're following the Jewish tradition, the Christian tradition, and the Islamic tradition of the right for individuals and collective bodies of people to defend themselves. And the Quran is very clear that the reason why fighting was permitted was had it not, لَوْلَا دَفَعُ اللَّهِ أَوْ دِفَعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضُ Had it not been for the defense or the constraint of one people upon another people, you would have seen temples, synagogues, churches, and mosques destroyed. And so, holy war is actually war in defense of the holy. I mean, that's what it is. It's war in defense of the holy. And this is what the Buddha is saying, that those laymen who are protecting the religious peoples, that they're actually acting in accordance with the precepts. Why? Because they're defending the holy. And so this idea somehow that war is unholy, if you look at Buddhism, the only reason I'm using Buddhism is because I think Buddhism is associated in the West by people as the ultimate pacifistic religion. I mean, the Buddhists actually say that when evil is proliferating and persecution is spreading, those who stop by and allow it to happen are not bodhisattvas, they're not people in search of enlightenment, they're demons. They're demons. And the same is certainly true in every religious tradition, that to sit and watch evil spread is unacceptable. Now where, in terms of the Muslims, I really feel this caricature of the Muslims as these evil, aggressive people. I mean, if you look at the numbers, I mean, if you just take a body count of how many Muslims have died in the last 50 years and how many non-Muslims have died in the last 50 years, how many Muslims have died at the hands of non-Muslims and how many non-Muslims have died at the hands of Muslims in the last 50 years, what you will surprisingly find is the overwhelming majority of Muslims that have been killed have actually been killed by other Muslims. Not a very pleasant thought. The Iranian and Iraqi war, remember that? Hama, does anybody remember that? Hama. But see, of course, those are kuffar as well. I mean, it's very easy to simply reduce it all down to this Manichaean simplistic worldview of black and white, good and evil. You can even take it back to the first split between Muawiyah and Sayyidina Ali. You can't say Muawiyah is a kafir unless you enter into a certain brand of Islam that is a very small minority opinion, but certainly not the majority opinion. The majority opinion is that Muawiyah was not a kafir. I mean, there's even a debate about Yazid, and there's certainly a lot more evidence there. Amr ibn al-As, I mean, he was one of the Sahaba. He relates hadith. His hadith are well recorded in Sahih Bukhari and other texts. And yet, he's the one who devised the plan of putting the Qur'an up on the poles in order to prevent the followers of Sayyidina Ali from continuing on. That's there. Those are Muslims killing each other. 70,000 Muslims, approximately, died during that period. I mean, in the last 50 years in Israel, around 30,000 people have died about 7,000 Jews, and about 23,000 Palestinians. That's 50 years. That equals two weeks in Hama. 30,000 Muslims in Hama died in that period of time. The same could be said about Fao. Do you remember Fao? I mean, you probably don't. I actually remember that, Fao. The waves of children being sent into holy war, jihad. This is our recent history. See, nobody cares about Rwanda. Nobody cares about the Hutsu and the Tutsu. 800,000? I mean, who talks about that genocide? Nobody really cares about that. Why? Because those are just jungle people, ignorant people. Who, who, well, who are they? But that's probably in our lifetimes. I mean, that's the single greatest atrocity. But you don't have people demonstrating to stop these type things. Really, you don't have that. I mean, there's atrocities all over this planet. Muslims, we think now, and it's very interesting because one of the things that we're always complaining about the Jewish people is how they think they're the only people that suffer. I mean, that's a very common 
motif in, in Muslim discourse. But Muslims also don't really think about other people that are suffering around the world, really. I mean, isn't it interesting that all of these Rwandans were becoming Muslim because they just thought the Anglican church had completely failed. And what they noticed is during this massacre, 